Somebody said, fair warning, Lord. Lord, strike that poor boy down. Yes, I'm going to talk about Van Halen fair warning. I'm very, very excited. I'm doing a little bit of show. I'm, I'm putting on a front. I'm putting on an act, but I am really excited. I always like talking about these albums, but I especially feel very, very excited today to talk about Fair Warning, which I have in its box right here. But before I get to that, some of you or none of you may be interested in knowing what's happening with the, the most recent fiasco in my life. This happened yesterday when uh, I got, uh, I did an unboxing um, of um, Metallica, Garage Days, the 598 EP. There was another record in that box that was supposed to be, I won't tell you what, but it was supposed to be something else that I was gonna talk about at some point. And it turned out to be a Cure record, which here it is here. This is called The Top. All right, now I had, I've never uh, spent one cent or one peso or one ruble or rupee or yen or whatever currency is your preferred currency. I've never spent one of them on The Cure, not on their music, not on their records, CDs, tapes, eight tracks, concerts. Uh, I've never watched one second of Cure video. The only Cure song I know uh, is Just Like Heaven, and the only reason I know that is because Goldfinger, who was one of my really top favorite bands in the 90s, they did a cover of Just Like Heaven on their uh, Darren's Coconut EP, Darren's Coconut Ass EP. That's the only reason why I know uh, just like Heaven by The Cure. So for some reason, Amazon sent me uh, this Cure album called The Top instead of the album I was supposed to receive. And going back a month ago to my crap with the Metallica trying to send something back, I know how hard it can be, but I thought with Amazon it would be a little bit better, a little bit easier because they're a big company. They, uh, you'd think that would make it harder, but I thought it would make it easier. Turns out it was a little mix of both. So what happened was, um, I tried, I thought it would be as simple as uh, getting on the internet or the app, whatever. I don't use the Amazon app, but I, I went to my account on, um, on Amazon and I went to the, the album that it was supposed to be and you can choose, you know, to review it or whatever. To, and I chose uh, that there was a problem with the order. And then from the problems you can choose, it was defective, it was damaged, it was the wrong order. Uh, it came late, it wasn't as described, whatever. So I chose not what I ordered. So far, so good. And then the next step was, I had three options to do. One, um, replace the item. That That's what I wanted to do. I wanted to send this Cure album back and receive the album that, uh, that I ordered originally, of course. The other album was a, a refund, a full refund to the, the card that I used to pay for it. The other option was Amazon credit, all right? So of course I chose the first option, which was just to replace the item, which I thought even at that, it's gonna be a pain in the ass. I knew from this with the returning metallic album, 72 seasons last month, that, that, that took like four days to emails back and forth, very difficult. So um, so I chose the option to, to return the item that was sent in error and then they would send me the item that I was supposed to have uh, in return. I, I screwed that up. So I chose that. And then when I went, when I clicked to continue to the next page, it said, we're, we're sorry, but this option is not available for this item. And I thought, like, is the, the thing that I, sold, that I ordered, the record, is it sold out or whatever? Um, but it wasn't. It was still available. And I thought, so, oh, what, a, what a shitty experience this is already. So I thought, I don't want to get my money back because I always lose a few dollars each time I exchange. And then when I buy it again, I lose a couple of dollars in the exchange. Plus, who knows, maybe it's going to be more expensive when I buy it again. Um, so I thought about um, just uh, getting the Amazon credit because then I would get the exact credit. This is through Amazon Mexico, by the way. And I'll, and I'll try to keep this short. I know it's all, it's that ship is probably sailed, but I'll, I'll try to, to keep it uh as short as possible, while maintaining crucial details. And so I, um, I tried the live chat with them. I wanted to explain to them, but it seemed that it was all just bots. Uh, you know, you click live chat and immediately it, it's, uh, it, can you confirm that this is your name and address, blah, blah, blah. Is this the item you choose, blah, blah, blah. So I thought, this is garbage. This is gonna just take me to bots. 
because I had the other problem last week with my internet and it was the same thing. It's all just bots. It's impossible to talk to a person. So I thought, this is not going well. Um, so then I called them. Now I called Amazon Mexico and I got through a couple of minutes with my limited Spanish skills or talent or ability. And I got to a point where, because sometimes this stuff is, it's very difficult and it's a pain in the ass even talking to somebody in your own language, in your native language, because it's just, you know, uh, you know, they ask you what happened and you tell them and they, you know, they uh, ask for more details and it's, it's just a pain in the ass. So I, um, I got to the point where I said to the guy, do you speak English? And he said, no. And I said, I need to, to speak to somebody in English. I told him this in Spanish. So he said, okay. And he, he said, okay, please just wait. I think he said that in English. So I waited a couple of minutes and he transferred me to a guy who spoke English and the guy so after a couple of minutes he said we don't see any orders on file for you and I said well I, I've been buying stuff from Amazon since 1999 I've, I've placed probably like 20 orders I don't know about 20 but 15 orders in the last month I don't know why you don't have any record of this and he said okay give me a minute and he's blah, 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 he's typing and it turned out that the problem was this guy was from Amazon US I ordered from Amazon Mexico and paid with a card from, from Canada, from my Canadian uh, bank that I've had since 1989. And so we had to sort that out. And again, to keep this short as possible, I ended up talking to this guy for 46 minutes. He was of no help. Uh, he, he, told, he asked me for the order number. I gave him what I thought was the order number, which I thought was, was this one right here. And it turns out that that was the tracking number. So I went into my account, found the order number. Pain in the ass. So he said, I'm going to transfer you back to Amazon Mexico, but somebody who speaks English. And that call ended up being, you know, your phone. It shows you how long each call is. So nobody can exaggerate uh, how, how long your call was. It was 46 minutes and I got disconnected. Uh, I, was, I was on hold or I can't remember what I got disconnected after 46 minutes. I thought, here we go again. So that was the end of that. So I thought, ah, I'll just return it. Uh, I'll, I'll, and even to return it, I, to return the Cure album, the top, I had to go, I don't have a printer in my house. I don't, do, do any of you have a printer? Does anybody really have a printer in their house these days? So I had to go to a papeleria to print. Um, uh, first of all, I had to call DHL. And again, I, I couldn't do this. Lily helped me. She called DHL to schedule a pickup. No, no, sorry. First I did that through Amazon and they sent me the tags, the, the, the DHL tags, which I had to go print. So I printed them. I had to go to the papeleria to print them. Came back, called DHL, which Lily had to help me with to, to schedule a pickup. So they said they were gonna come today. I had to, they say to repackage it, make sure it's all ready to go, taped up and everything uh, with, with the two tags, one inside the box, one taped on the box. I don't have packing tape in my house. I, I think there are probably fewer people that have packing tape than have printers. Uh, God, this is so terrible. So I did all that. And then later at night, this was hours later. This, uh, no, then I had, I had called uh, Amazon later again, spoke to them for another 25 minutes, 27 minutes, something like that, and got nowhere with them. This guy was also from Amazon US and he spoke English and, um, I explained, him, I explained him the situation. He said, ah, you know what? I, I'd like to help you. And he was a nice guy. And I felt bad because he felt my wrath. And I, I apologized to the guy. I said, I know it's not you personally, but unfortunately, fate brought us together and you're the face of Amazon. So you're the one who's gonna bear the brunt of my, of my rage. And so he was a nice guy, but in the end, didn't help me. Hours later, at, at about 10 o'clock at night, I was still very spicy about this. And uh, I went into to the Amazon. I thought I'm gonna I'm gonna try the chat. And I, I went in and it took they it started with bots. You have to I guess there's like a screening or a vetting process. You have to go through answer all the questions through bots. And then they do connect you with a live person. Now the live person it really was a live person, and messages were answered fairly quickly, almost immediately. Unlike the the internet company last week or two weeks ago, who was like 20 minutes between messages, and you're sitting around waiting. So I talked to this woman from Amazon, Mexico called Miriam Ramos, and she was very, very helpful. To put an end to this story, she said, I'm gonna send, she said, I don't know why the, the website said that you can't get a replacement. She said, I'm gonna send you a replacement right now. 
And she said, hold for a minute. So I waited and she said, check your account and tell me if it's there. I checked my account. Yes, it was there, the, the record that I ordered. And Dallas, if you're watching, Dallas knows what it is. Because um, I, was, I was texting with him. So I said, yes, it's there, thank you. So she, um, she, she sent it yesterday. She said it'll be, this was Thursday. She, she, uh, she placed the order yesterday, last night, Thursday. I guess it's gonna be shipped today. It's gonna be here on Saturday. So not bad, two days waiting. Uh, and she, she said, yeah, keep, keep the album. That's it. So, and again, not that I have any use for, uh, for your Cure album. I've gone my whole life without buying a Cure album or a CD or recording of any kind. But uh, I'll take it. And you know what? I'm going to talk about this album. Not today, but obviously I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a listen to it. Why not? So I, I have a new record. So this will be featured at some point. I don't know when. I'm going to have to listen to it and take notes. But uh, there it is. So I, talk about, I will talk about The Cure, the top. Um, so anyway, a, a good resolution to the problem. But honestly, I, so I got a free record out of it. Yeah, that's great. I honestly would have preferred to have avoided the whole problem and confrontations and crap and not had the cure record just god amazon you made the mistake fix it don't make me go out to a papeleria print stuff call dhl wait and dhl said they were going to come between 10 and or, sorry 12 and 6 so a six hour window i have to uh i would be here anyway but uh six hour window and i'm supposed to to package the thing up anyway so that that story is over finished gone done out which brings me to Fair Warning by Van Halen, the reason why you're here. Uh, and some of you have turned out, I'm sure. I got a loose thread here. Look at that. Um, so Van Halen, to, to get to that, I talked about uh, 1984 last week. Uh, I mentioned that's my least favorite of the David Lee Roth era, the, the classic six albums they did with David Lee Roth. That's my least favorite. Going in the opposite direction here, not only is, is Fair Warning my favorite Van Halen album, it's, it's in my top 10 uh, records of all time. And I, I talk about this with Kill 'Em All and The Number of the Beast and Kiss Alive multiple times, Diary of a Madman, Paranoid, which I haven't done yet. I, maybe I'll get that record at some point. Um, but th this, this is like the, the Shout Out the Devil was there too, probably. The albums that really formed my early days when I was a kid of listening to music. So Fair Warning came out in 1981 when I was 11 years old. And at that point, I guess the only music I knew, at least rock and records, I had some singles. Um, I knew uh, Kiss. I had a bunch of Kiss records in 1981. I had Paranoid. That might have been it. I got Dire of a Madman. I think I got that in 1982 and I got Number of the Beast in 82. Fair Warning came out in 81. I have no idea what month. It came out in January, December. And I, I don't think it was brand new when I got it, but it, it was their latest album because the next one, Diver Down, I remember that coming out when it was a new album and buying that album. Um, now, I don't remember. I, and sometimes you try to piece together the timeline. From what I remember, the first Van Halen song I ever heard was either... I feel like I, I must have heard You Really Got Me at some point on the radio and maybe a couple of other, maybe uh, whatever songs they played on the radio, maybe Dance the Night Away and uh, Run Him With the Devil, I don't know, whatever songs from the first two albums, first album anyway, and Dance the Night Away from the second. Um, but what, what really sticks in my mind and what made me buy Fair Warning was So This Is Love. So This Is Love. There used to be a station in Toronto, and maybe still is called 1050 Chum AM. And every Friday in the Toronto Star newspaper, they printed the top 30 1050 Chum FM songs. And so This Is Love by Van Halen was, uh, was on that chart. So that's what makes me think that I'd already known Van Halen, because I thought, I, I, oh, and I, I think I'd heard the, and the Cradle Will Rock too. Yeah, that was the, uh, yeah, that was the third album, Women Show Them First, Fair Warning was the fourth. Um, so when I saw that Van Halen had this, uh, and then Chum FM, which was 104.5, they also had the top albums. So a combination of that. So this is Love on the, on the 1050 Chum AM songs, top songs of the week, and Fair Warning Record, 104.5 Chum FM albums. I knew that, and I was aware that Van Halen had this record called Fair Warning, and I wanted to buy it, so I did. I don't know when, but... I, I should have looked this when when this looked for this 
the month that Fair Warning came out, sometime in 81. So I bought it in either 81 or 82. Uh, so I'm gonna go through it track by track. And this was, uh, and I'm gonna open it up here. Here it is here. Hopefully it's the right record. And I've, I've got a lot to go through. And I, I now I'm, it's in the back of my mind that, uh, you know, they're, they're, some of the, the ones that I order are not gonna be in the, the, the boxes that they're supposed to be. Um, so this was, uh, this again shaped my path for the music that I would continue to listen to back then and still until now. Uh, so, and this was a very fair warning was, uh, looking back on, I guess I had no idea at the time. It was a pretty, a, kind of a dark album compared to, especially, you know, the first Van Halen record and the second one were kind of party, light, you know, beautiful girls and, uh, Jamie's crying. And this one was a little bit darker, more serious. I didn't know that at the time, but, uh, it is my favorite. So I'm going to, I'm going to unbox it now. All right, and I, I remember Van Halen albums had bad packaging. Uh, when I did uh, in 1984 last week, I mentioned that, that, that uh, the, Van, the, the 1984 album, it just had a, on one side of the inside dust leaf had a really, really lousy picture. And the other side was just uh, one picture of the band with tiny, very basic credits. Who played what, who engineered it, produced it, mastered it, whatever. Now, fair warning, is this correct? Okay, it is, they got this one right. Uh, double, fair warning, and uh, confirmation there, fair warning. Um, what was I saying? Um, I got sidetracked. Uh, anyway, oh yeah, the packaging. Now I remember this, the, the inside, the, the dust sleeve or dust jacket had the one side, it was, it was a wall with the Van Halen logo graffitied on it and it said, um, the line from uh, Mean Street, somebody said, fair warning, Lord strike that poor boy down, or maybe it was a little bit more, it was like four lines or something. That's all I remember on the one side. Uh, I guess this is gonna be, uh, be the same. Uh, 1984 did not, the one that I opened last week from Miguel, did not have a hype sticker. I'll see if, uh, if this one does. These tabs are no good, I don't need a tab. All right. And, ah, there it is, fair warning. Nah, no hype sticker at all. So I don't need to, to pause the video and go out and take a picture. Uh, but there it is, fair warning. I always really, really like this artwork. I don't know why. Um, it's really, really cool. And, and I found out much, much, much later, like internet era, maybe even in the last five or 10 years, that if, I think this was done by a, a Canadian artist. Um, I don't know, but I, I really, really like, maybe because I was young when I got this, isn't it, it was an early one that I, I have a, a, a sentimental attachment to it, to fair warning. Uh, this version came out in, uh, it doesn't say, oh, this is made in the Netherlands. I don't know, can, can you see that? This is a Netherlands copy, which I don't really care about. Um, and there's the spines. Some people like to see the spines. All right, uh, so I will, uh, Slice this fat bastard up, as Jerry Seinfeld once said. And this one, I, I don't have to be gentle or kind with this one because there's no hype sticker. All right, there it is, fair warning. Uh, and let's see what's inside. Ah, yes, I do remember this photo and that. Yeah, that's exactly what I thought. And someone said, for a warning, Lord, strike that poor way down. Turn from hunted into hunter. A little bit different. The, this, the, the graffiti says, turn from hunted into hunter. The actual lyric was, turns you from hunted into hunter. Um, gonna hunt somebody down. This says, went to hunt somebody down. Um, Van Halen never had lyrics. I think the first Van Halen album that had lyrics was 5150. Sammy Hager era. And... Um, which almost I, Van Halen to me, almost didn't exist. May as well have not existed at that point. So uh, a lot of puffy hair in this picture, well coiffed. Look at all those guys. L look at the, the hair. Looks, looks like uh, helmet hair. All right. Yeah, no, no real, uh, you know, liner notes. It just says Dave Lee Roth vocals, Edward Van Halen guitar, Michael Anthony bass, Alex Van Halen drums. Ted Templeman, producer, Don Landy, engineer, 
remastered by blah, blah, blah. That's it. All the ASCAP information, publishing information, and that's it. Obviously, the uh, updated version has vanhalen.com or van-halen.com. Oh, and let me take a look at the record. This is, this is nice and sturdy. This, this is uh, good and thick. That's what she said, right? This is a little bit different than I remember. This was uh, the label. It used to be the classic Warner Brothers label, which was kind of a white, kind of like an off-white like this. And it had the Warner Brothers logo at the top. And then the, uh, the songs. I had a lot of records that were on Warner Brothers records. All right. There it is. So I can put this back. Uh, and I know this one. This is uh, Mean Street, Dirty Movies, Sinner Swing, Hear About It Later, Side 2, um, Unchained, Push Comes to Shove, So This Is Love, Sunday Afternoon in the Park, and One Foot Out the Door. I know, I know this album cold. Again, one of my favorites ever. Can't tell you how much I love this album. And I'm very, very excited. I listened to this yesterday. I was actually going to do this yesterday, but I was so taken aback by the problem with Amazon that I, I lost my, uh, my will to, to talk about it. But when I listened to this record yesterday, out for a walk, I was very, very excited. So uh, Mean Street, oh, and you know what, I'll tell you this album, the first five songs on this album, uh, Mean Street, Dirty Movies, Center Swing, Hear About It Later, and Unchained, those five songs could be my five favorite Van Halen songs ever in some kind of order. There's one other one that I would consider that could possibly be also number one, but it's not on this album. Forget about that for now. But uh, that's how good this album is, is the first five songs are all vying for the, the coveted top position of my favorite Van Halen song in their entire catalog. Uh, so Mean Street, it's got that amazing guitar intro, which I don't know if it's, uh, it's not really a riff, it's, it's, I don't know if it's tapping or what it is, it, it, if it's finger picking or, uh, you know, picking. I have no idea what it is, but oh my God, I love it. Uh, and then, and then the riff, and then the drums, oh my God. Mean Street is unbelievable. Uh, at night I watch the stinking street, pass the crazies on my block, and I see the same old faces and I hear the same old talk. And I'm searching for the latest thing, a break in this routine. I'm talking some new kicks, ones like you ain't never seen. And I love David Lee Roth, maybe, I, I think he got more attention as a, a showman and a front man than, uh, than he did as a singer. But I love his delivery of this song, how he kind of spits the lyrics out, kind of venomous. He sounds, uh, you know, kind of, kind of angry. He's just spitting those out. Um, uh, and the great backing vocals. This is home, this is Mean Street. Oh my God, Mean Street. Again, top five, possibly number one Van Halen song ever. Until I come to the second song. Ah, now this is, this is in the wrong order. I always wondered why, uh, why bands did this, why they, they put the songs in the wrong order. Um, mean Street is correct, the last two are correct. Unchained is correct. But some of them are out of order. Anyway, uh, now I know the next one is uh, uh, Dirty Movies. And a lot of Van Halen had uh, a lot of punctuation. Dirty Movies, for some reason, was in uh, question marks or quotation marks. So this is Love was a question mark. And Sinner Swing was an exclamation mark. And also on uh, uh, Tora Tora Tora, I think also had an exclamation mark or exclamation point. Everybody Wants Some, I think had a double exclamation point. So Van Halen had a lot of, uh, uh, a lot of punctuation. I'm not sure if, if that was David Lee Roth's doing or Eddie Van Halen's or management or I don't know who's in charge of that, but uh, a lot of punctuation. So next was um, Dirty Movies. What a, what a, Great song, kind of a slow, very, very different than Mean Street, kind of a slow, mellow groove to it. Um, and Dave Lee Roth is the, the king of ad-libs. Uh, he had some, some great ones in, uh, in Mean Street too. I guess that whole middle part, uh, somebody said fair warning, you're gonna, gonna strike that poor boy down. Um, dirty movies, the middle part, 
Hey, you remember that girl was prom queen? Oh, wow. Take it off, take it all off, woo! Um, yeah, that, that's also a contender for, for top five songs ever, uh, Dirty Movies. And when I was a kid, when I listened to this album, when I was 11, 12 years old, the chorus, uh, pictures on the silver screen, uh, and I love the, the lyrics, the, now who's that babe with the fabulous shadow? Um, it's only one scene, but to me it don't matter. Um, showbiz is so thrilling, the camera roll, she's willing. Don't see baby now. Anyway, the pictures on the silver screen, I thought he was saying bitches on the silver screen when I was 11 or 12 years old. Bitches on the silver screen, pictures on the silver screen. Uh, anyway, so that's um, Dirty Movies. Next is Sinner Swing. This one goes back to the, the fast up tempo, very, uh, it's not heavy, but, it, but it's uh, very, very fast and up tempo. Uh, and in this, in this uh, song, a big thing when I was a kid, he said, fucking, David Lee Roth said, fucking, she looks so fucking good, so sexy and so frail. And bands, that was, that was still a big, big deal back then for bands to swear. I don't know if I had ever heard anybody say fuck in, uh, in a song before. At this point, probably not. Maybe, uh, was, there, was there anybody? Can, can anybody think of a song where they said fuck or, or some form? Uh, of of that word, I feel like there's something, but but I don't know. I can't think of one. Um, there's definitely one. What what did I know that that had that word in it? Ah, who the fuck are you? The who? Who are you? That who are you? Who the fuck are you? Which is funny because that song got played on the radio, and they they left that in. I don't I don't remember that song getting bleeped out. Um. So she looks so fucking good, so sexy and so frail. And he just sounds so passionate. She looks so fucking good, so sexy and so frail. Something got the bite on me. I'm going straight to hell. And now we're wasting time. Now we're wasting time. No more pickup lines. Um, again, those three, you, you can't get better three songs in a row uh, to start an album. Right here. This is, this is the best album for that, for me. Um, next was, uh, what was track three? I, I'm missing this. Oh no, Center Swing was three. Yeah, Mean Street, uh, Dirty Movie, Center Swing. Next was uh, Hear About It Later. I don't wanna. I love that that clean guitar intro, kind of kind of mellow. And then as Paul Stanley says, now it gets rough. And the, the David Lee Roth uh, screaming and uh, the wailing guitar. Ain't got no money, got no house on the hill. Tell me, honey, will you're loving, pay my bills. Pay my bills. Oh my God. Uh, this is just, I don't know what else to say. I can't, again, I can't say enough how much I love this album, every song. Uh, I don't wanna. Uh, and then the great backup vocals. I don't wanna, I don't wanna hear about it later. I do what I want to, I don't wanna, baby. I ain't gonna, I don't wanna. What a, what a great mix of David Lee Roth delivering the lead. And uh, I guess Eddie and... Uh, uh, Michael Anthony doing the backing vocals. Uh, oh, hear about it later. And the, the, that song ends with, uh, is it that one that ends with, uh, they kind of hold it and then Dave Lee Roth has one of his, wow, I, I, I can't do his, uh, I can't do anything that Dave Lee Roth did except look good. Uh, but he had one of his, uh, his yelps or something and then the song, the first side ended. And then you would flip it over and you would get to Unchained. Let me catch my breath. Unchained, um, I would say that's number one. Maybe the best riff ever in all of music, all of metal, because you don't associate riffs with anything but metal. Maybe the Rolling Stones had riffs. But, uh, you know, I, I've said before, it's hard to pick a favorite album, a, a favorite band, and as you get smaller and smaller, favorite song, favorite riff, it's, it's impossible. There are thousands and thousands of riffs. I, I'd be, um, it would be pretty difficult for me to find one that brings me more pure joy than the opening riff of Unchained, especially super, they're all better loud, of course, but super, super loud. It just explodes. It's so, uh, it, it's not heavy. It's just so thick and rich and lush and colorful. Uh, and it, it has that weird effect to it, that kind of flangy effect. 
Um, oh my god. Uh, um, ah, ha, ha. His David Lee Ross little, little uh, laugh. What's the first line of Unchained? Uh, I, I cannot get there from here, and I don't care where I'm going. Here's to your thin red line. I'm stepping over, and then the great backing vocals again. Thought you'd never miss me till I got a fat city address. Nonstop talker, what a rocker. Blue, white, murder, and a size five dress. Change, nothing stays the same. Unchain, and you hit the ground running. Change, and nothing stays the same. Unchain, uh, I don't ask for permission. I don't ask for permission. This is my chance to fly. This is my chance to fly. Maybe enough ain't enough for you, but it's, oh my God. And then there was a great live version of that from Oakland in 1981, that there was a, a video for it later, and maybe this came out around 83, 84, 85, when they started showing metal videos. And that live video from Oakland, I think they also did, uh, there was video from, of hear about it later, I think, from that same uh, show. Yeah, uh, Unchained, I, I'm going to have to go with Unchained as my, my number one Van Halen song in there, not just on this album, but in their entire catalog. And I'm sure that's not a, a, an outrageous pick. There are a lot of people, I'm sure, who would pick, who, who feel the same way as Unchained as I do, about Unchained as I do. Um, Push Comes to Shove is next. I don't know why I'm looking at here, because it's out of order. Push Comes to Shove is next. This was, this was very different than the rest of the album. This was um, kind of quiet, mellow, uh, very laid back. It starts with again, kind of a spoken word, not really singing, but uh, hey, is there anything left in that bottle? Pass over here. Uh, does it feel cold in here to you? Uh, that's when push comes to shove. I believe it was inevitable. That is not, now, it's hard to, you know, five great songs, it's hard to, to get any higher, especially after Unchained. But it, it would be incorrect to say it's a come down, even though it is, because I, I really do love still when push comes to shove, or just push comes to shove. Um, next, why do I keep picking that up? Next was, oh, so this is love. So we're back to the, to the fast rockers. Um, so this is love. And again, great, great uh, vocals with that. Possibly, again, maybe not the first Van Halen song I, I heard, but the one that spurred me to buy this album. Uh, so this is love. Ooh, I need your loving. Uh, and I love the guitar on that. On uh, something about that song, I'm sure everybody knows this. And I know in more recent editions of it, they remastered it. The volume goes down. It's, it's kind of, a, it's a bass and drum intro. And six or seven or eight seconds into the song, the, uh, the volume comes down. And I've always wondered why that is. Who was, who was responsible for that? Was it an error in mastering? Was it recorded like that? I, I really, I'm, I'm not the person to, to ask about these things. And nobody asked me, but I'm telling you, um, but I always thought that was very peculiar and similar to somebody in the crowd yelling motherfucker at the end of Revelations on Iron Maiden's Live After Death. Um, I've never heard any, anybody really talking about this, although I know everybody must know about it and maybe there's a, a reason for it. I'm not going to, I'll pick this up only as a prop. Uh, so next was One Foot Out, uh, sorry, um, Sunday Afternoon in the Park, the instrumental. It's been well documented what, what I think about instrumentals. I really like this one. I'm not sure why. Maybe because it's only, I think it's two or two and a half minutes long. And um, I've always thought, I think even when I was a kid, that it sounds like a, a dog growling that low, um, and that those kind of, uh, that weird drum sound. I don't know if it's electronic drums or if there's some kind of effect on them. Um, but to me, this is a good instrumental. This, to me, clearly was written as an instrumental piece rather than sometimes to me instrumentals feel like it's like the band had a song but they either didn't have time to add lyrics to it or didn't want to or were too lazy to or, or just didn't have anything in the tank but to me uh sunday afternoon in the park and there are a couple on diver down that are like that too at least two i think that feels like an instrumental more of like a, an intro into the last song which is one foot out the door which is a weird song and i i don't dislike it i really love this album but it's, it's a strange song because it's only a, what is it, a minute and a half or a minute? That's uh, no, more than that. Maybe it's two, around two minutes. Let me roll up onto the sidewalk and take a look. Yes. One for that. There is 156. And it is, it's a, a strange song because it's, uh, it's short, it's fast. It's just one 
uh, one verse, one chorus, and then I, I think a, a lead and it kind of fades out. Uh, seems kind of incomplete to me. I love for what's there, but I feel like they should have fleshed it out more or that it was meant to be a longer song. Um, but I like it how it is. And those those last two, Sunday Afternoon in the Park and One Foot Out the Door, even though they're they're not on the level of some of the other ones, they, they don't take away from this album. Again, top 10 ever this album is. Uh, so that's it. That's uh, Van Halen, Fair Warning. Uh, and my... Uh, and we'll, we'll give a little hello to The Cure as well. And uh, I, have some, I do have some things to say about The Cure. And it's kind of funny that Amazon sent me, of all the, the wrong albums they could have sent, I talked about this with Dallas, it's funny that they sent me a Cure album, and I'll, I'll talk about that uh, at some point, um, but not today. So that was all for, uh, for the, the Van Halen guys. And man, Eddie Van Halen, he's, he's probably my favorite guitarist ever, uh, either him or Ace Frehley. Obviously, Eddie Van Halen, if people want to talk about technical skill and, you know, Eddie Van Halen is obviously the greatest. But I mean, just for me, in terms of what I like and, and what they've meant to me, those two, Ace Frehley, because he was the first and Eddie Van Halen was maybe not quite, nah, maybe he was the second. Maybe Tony Iommi was second for me. Eddie Van Halen was the first guitarist that made me really pay attention as a guitarist, I think. I liked Ace as a member of KISS, but Eddie Van Halen was... Uh, was the first guy where I thought, I, I really like this this guy playing guitar. Uh, so that's all. More to come. I, I have a lot still to come. But that's all today for Van Halen.